Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Oh, good day, viewers. I welcome you to this wonderful day. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and we will always be glad in it. I thank you that you are there and the Lord will continue to keep us together in the name of Jesus. Oh, welcome to our daily devotional of the Daily Fountain of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Oh, today God has given us another privilege to gather together to study His Word, to meditate and to be guided by the Word of God. And I pray that as you join us today, God will bless you and your life will never remain the same in the name of Jesus. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We appreciate you, God. Thank you, Lord, for this day that you have made. Father, we pray that today, as we go through your word, that you breathe upon us, you minister to us. Lord, you give us your counsel from above. And Father, may your word guide and strengthen us. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Our topic for today being the 14th day in June 2020, our topic is nourished and built up. Nourished and built up. Our text is taken from 1 Peter chapter 2 from verse 1. 1 Peter chapter 2, we we'll read from verse 1 and it says, Therefore, laying aside all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and all evil speaking, as newborn babes desire the pure milk of the world, that you may grow thereby, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is gracious. Coming to him as to a living stone, rejected indeed by men, but chosen by God and precious, you also as living stones are being built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer all spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Therefore, it is also contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he who believes on him will by no means be put to shame. Therefore, to you who believe, he is precious. But to those who are disobedient, the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone, and a stone of stumbling, and a rock of offense. They stumble, being disobedient to the word, to which they also were appointed. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, who once were not a people, but are now the people of God, who had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. This is the word of God. And thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Let's go into our devotional guide. Our topic again is nourished and built up. The word of God is described in our text as spiritual milk that could make young believers grow in the Lord. As we grow, we discover that the word is also strong meat for the mature. Sometimes, children have no appetite because they have been eating the wrong things. Peter warns that we lay aside certain wrong attitudes of heart that would hinder our appetite and spiritual growth. Again, we must remember that we are a spiritual house. Jesus himself being the chief cornerstone. That is in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 20. We must eat the healthy word of God in balanced proportions so that we can grow properly in the faith. Again, as a spiritual house, we must allow God build us according to his pattern in order to serve his purpose. Too often, Christians hinder the building of the church because they are following the wrong plans. When Solomon built the temple, 
His workmen followed the plan so carefully that everything fit together. That's in 1 Kings chapter 6, verse 7. If all of us will follow God's blueprints given in his word, we will build his church for his glory. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Remember, our topic is nourished and built up. In our text, the scripture tells us, it says, Therefore, laying aside all malice and all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and all evil speaking, as newborn babies, that we should desire the pure milk of the world, that you may grow thereby. Hallelujah. It is obvious that every child of God, or when a child is born, from the one the child needs to be nourished, the child needs to be fed. Everything that is alive needs to be fed so that it can remain alive. And here, the scripture is telling us, Peter is saying, that as children of God, from the moment we came into the body of Christ, as newborn babies in the Lord spiritually, we must desire the sincere milk of God so that by it and through it we can grow, so that through it we can be nourished, so that through it we can become better and better and better, growing from strength to strength, from grace to grace. And what did he say here? He said for us to be able to have this milk, this food of God to dwell in us, there are things we must do away with. He said you must lay aside all malice, all deceit, all hypocrisy, envy, and all evil speaking. Anything that is evil, we must lay it aside. We must, we must push, push them aside so that they will not hinder us. They will not stop us. In Hebrews chapter 5, from verse 11, that, we have, that is referenced there. Hebrews chapter 5, from verse 11, the scripture says, the scripture tells us, he said, of whom we have much to say, and hard to explain, since you have become dull of hearing. For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God. And you have come to need milk and not solid food. Hallelujah. Praise the living Jesus. In verse 13, he says, For everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, for he is a baby. But solid food belongs to those who are of full age, that is, those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Oh, the scripture is telling us from the moment, from the moment we give our lives to Christ, from, the, from that very moment we surrender ourselves unto God, there's a need for us to desire to feed on the word of God. There's a need for us to desire to eat from the food of God so that we can grow, so that we can become, can be nourished, and so that we can, uh, there can be a balancing of everything in our life so that we can grow properly and become the people that God wants us to become. Peter was. He said, to get this, we must lay aside certain wrong attitudes of the heart. These attitudes of the heart, they are the ones that hinder our appetite. When children are fed with wrong things, they, have, they lose appetite from eating what is right. The one that will make them to grow properly. Today, there are many, so many Christians, unfortunately, that are feeding from wrong things. And the appetite for the real word of God is lost. The appetite to, to desire the real word of God is no more there. It is lost. Why? Because they are filled. They are already full of wrong things, negative things, negative words. And these are the things that cause people to backbite, to fight, to quarrel, to have malice, and to be involved in all manner of evil speaking. Hallelujah. When, evils, when malice, deceit, hypocrisy, envy, evil speaking, when they occupy your heart, it will not allow the word of God to dwell in you. It will not allow the word of God to, to grow in you and to, and to make you to be fully nourished. The word of God is what God has designed for us to build us, to keep us strong, to help us to grow in grace. To make us to grow in grace so that we can be strong, so that we can get to the level that Christ desires that we get to. The word used here is that we must desire it. 
desire it. That means it's not just to look for it, but to, to, to desire it to, to the extent that you want it by all means. In other words, go out of, go doing everything possible and right under God to get the word of God. Do not allow yourself to starve or to be starved of the word of God because you need it, because it will keep you growing. It will help you to grow. And when the word of God dwells in you, it will help you to get rid of all this evil. It will help you to get rid of all these wrong things that hinder people from becoming what God wants them to be. That hinder people from receiving the word of God. Like I said, it is most unfortunate today. Believers getting involved in malice, getting involved in hatred, getting involved in talking about people behind them, getting involved in destroying others, getting involved in, in castigating people instead of fellowshipping together, instead of sharing the word of God, instead of singing psalms and praises to the name of the Lord. You see believers gather together and talk about wrong things from morning to night. How can they grow? They cannot grow. God is speaking to you this morning. Lay aside, put aside all those wrong mind, all those wrong things, all those wrong attitudes, all those activities that hinder you and desire the word of God. Let the word of God dwell in you richly. Why? Because we are not just, just ordinary people. We are a precious people. Oh, we are precious people. We are people that God has called out of darkness into light. Oh, God has called us to be his very own. We are priests. We are belong to God. We are precious people. In verse 9, he said, he said, But you are a chosen generation, a royal priest to the holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. He said, Once there was a time you were not a people, but now you are a people. There was a time that you were in darkness, but now you are in the light. There was a time you had no mercy, but now you have obtained mercy by the grace of God. Therefore, let us build up ourselves through the word of God. Let us enrich ourselves by the word of God. Let us make sure the word of God dwells in us richly so that we'll be able to grow, so that we'll be able to fulfill God's mandate, God's purpose concerning us. The word of God gives us specifications. God's word gives us specification on what we do, should do, on how we should grow. Now that's, we, that's what we saw in 1 Kings chapter 6, verse 7. The temple, the, 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 the temple of God was being built according to specification. When Solomon was building the temple, the workmen were given the specification on how they should go about it, how they should build the, the temple of God. And that is the same way God wants us to build up ourselves. Remember, we are the building. We are a spiritual temple. We are a spiritual building that God is building, that God wants to nourish. And how can we nourish this? By giving ourselves, to the, by devoting ourselves to the word of God. Can I quickly read something for us? Quickly read something for us in Acts of the Apostles chapter 20. Acts of the Apostles chapter 20, one verse 32. It says, so now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. Oh, the word of grace that is able to build you up. The word of grace that is able to give you an inheritance among those who are sanctified. Hallelujah. When the word of God dwells in you, it transforms your life. The word of God dwells in you, it builds you up. When the word of God abides in you, it helps you to overcome evil, overcome challenges. The things that worry people will not worry you. When the word of God is in you, it gives your heart joy, gives you joy, gives you inner strength. Oh, when, people, when they think that you are supposed to be in sorrow, the word of God gives you an inner joy that gives you strength to keep going. Even when it looks as if you are failing, the word of God keeps you strong, keeps you going, keeps you flying, keeps you strong always. Brothers and sisters, desire the sincere word of God. Desire that word of God that will keep you strong, that will keep you growing. Hallelujah. You want to be able to overcome malice, overcome this, uh, the lifestyle of, of hatred, evil words, all those evil communications. Devote yourself to the word of God. And your life naturally will overcome all forms of evil communication. Hallelujah. Praise the living Jesus. Our, our prayer says, 
Lord, please nourish and build me up in your word. May that be your prayer. Let this be your prayer today and say, Lord, please nourish me and build me up in your word. Help me to be strong by your word. Build me up by your word. Build me up by your word. The word of God is not scarce. But when you, not, when you allow evil things to dominate your heart, it becomes scarce. Why people are falling apart and in sorrow, they are being deceived, all manner of false prophets and here and there, is because the word of God is scarce. The word of God is scarce. I pray that today this word of God will not be far from you again. Desire it, follow it, get it into your life and walk by it and your life will never remain the same. May God bless you in the name of Jesus. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you Lord because today again you have given us opportunity to be reminded how wonderful, how powerful it is for us to desire your word and to have your word in our hearts. Lord, we pray today, oh God, fill us with your word. Grant us grace, O oh God, Father, to daily desire your word so that your word will keep us from falling. Your word will keep us alive. Your word will nourish us and make us to grow into the full stature that Christ has designed for us. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. God bless you. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of The Daily Fountain. If you are led to sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen.